What's up YouTube, it is your boy JB and we are here today with a review for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. This is season 11, I believe this is episode number 9. Let's take a look and see. Yep, number 9. The episode was titled A Pretty Meltdown. Alright you guys, so before we actually get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and not already subscribed to the channel, then you know, why are we still going out with each other? Do me a big solid favor and hit that subscribe button, you guys, and turn on your notifications. Do all of that. Like the video, share the video, everything. Now, with that out of the way, without further ado, let's go ahead and just talk about this episode, shall we? All right, you guys. So this episode, it literally opens up where we left off last week. You guys remember that Sutton had the whole meltdown, right? That she was talking about Crystal and her ugly leather pants, right? The thing that annoyed me in this episode was the fact that the ladies were all going to, you know, Sutton's defense. I'm like, really? It was just, it was just interesting that the white woman gave her white woman tears, and everybody just surrounds the white woman, and it's like, really? And then y'all still want to sit here and blame Crystal, which Crystal is not at fault for anything, right? So then Garcelle goes over and talks to um, Crystal, right? And Garcelle says to Crystal that, you know, her saying violate threw them all for a loop. And I'm still with Crystal. Crystal did not use the word violate incorrectly. Crystal used the word violate in the in a correct sense, in, in, in the um, correct, you know, Webster's Dictionary version. It's you guys. It's and, and I mean, I know people, when people hear the word violate, I don't know why I'm going to air quote. I don't want people to hear the word violate. They think of sexual violation. But that's not what it was. It was a violation of her privacy. Now, could Crystal have locked the door? Yes. There are a lot of things that could have happened. So, Sutton apologizes to Crystal about her comment about her own leather pants. She's like, they're not really ugly. So then Crystal says, well, did I say something that triggered you or something like that? And, and Sutton says, no, it's, it, you didn't say anything. It's just your presence alone. I'm like, well, Sutton, that's a personal issue then if you, if her presence alone bothered you. Now, granted, they did say something to Crystal that I didn't, I think she should have apologized for. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But, um, I don't think Crystal owes her an apology for the word violate. She said the word that best reflected how she felt. And she stood and she stands in it. And, and, I'm, and I'm actually here for Crystal for that. Don't back down to these ladies about what you said and what you think and what you felt. Don't back down to it, right? Now, the, the thing that I think Crystal should have apologized for is when she, you know, she um, said that sudden, sudden came off white manic. That one she should have apologized for. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys with that one. Crystal definitely should have apologized for the manic comment. Because I didn't think that that was, you know, something that she should have said. Especially given the fact that, you know, Sutton had explained, expressed to her that her father had committed suicide. So I don't think that Crystal should have used that word. And I think Crystal definitely should have apologized. Which she did eventually apologize. And Renna was like, that's not an apology. I'm like, Renna, I know you're the last person to talk about apologizing. Have you apologized to Denise for how you did her last season? If you haven't, shut up. And then Crystal never... Like, Crystal said, you know, I apologize. There was no but in there or anything like that. But Renna just felt like she had to take over and say her piece. Renna, have you apologized to Denise? Have you apologized to Denise? Have you apologized to Yolanda? Yolanda? I was about to say Yolanda the way that um, um, Vanderpump used to say. But have you apologized to either one of those two? I want to know that question. Have you apologized to Vanderpump? Not oh, yeah. Oh, three people. Vanderpump. Have you apologized to Vanderpump? Have you apologized to Denise? Have you apologized to Yolanda? Because Yolanda and the Munchausen's thing, that is why you I mean, that is really one of the reasons. I think that's the main reason that she's not on the show anymore. Is the Munchausen. But have you apologized to any of those ladies? Now, granted, I know you probably haven't apologized to Vanderpump. I, I don't. I don't ever expect you to apologize to Vanderpump. I don't expect any of the ladies to ever apologize to Vanderpump. Although I wish Vanderpump would come back to the show. I miss Van. I miss Vanderpump. I really do. But let's move on, you guys. 
all right you guys so we moved over four days later right so we see all the ladies are joining via like i guess zoom or skype or whatever i'm like what's going on here so then we see kyle kyle was talking to who was she talking to i know she was talking to renna i don't remember who else was on that call but i know renna was on the call and i think it was i think it was three of them i know it was she her i know it was her and Ren oh that's who it was no was it who it was I don't I know it was Renna and Kyle so Kyle lets us know that at well they didn't really say when in the filming process but I do remember seeing this on the blogs that three of the housewives of Beverly Hills had you know contracted COVID so they have to halt production at that point and the three people who caught COVID was Kathy um Kathy Kyle and Doree so at this point they have to quarantine for two weeks and they're and filming this now but that's happened on all the other housewives shows that you know have pretty much all the housewives shows you know um actually new york shut down new york shut down at one point i remembered that new york had to shut down atlanta shut down beverly hills shut down the only shows that i know of so far that have not shut down filming at all is potomac i don't think potomac had to stop filming and salt lake city even orange county had to stop filming but orange county filmed at the beginning of the pandemic i don't think i don't think dallas shut down either well Dow, yep dallas did shut down because dallas actually started filming last in february of 2020 and they have to shut down until they could until you know but shit that's so interesting when it comes to dallas if they shut down filming but we were op but texas has been open because texas reopened let's see when did texas reopen texas reopened back in april of last year because it is an idiot white woman i'm not talking about her but they had the quarantine for two weeks so we're going to move on you guys so i can talk about the next story all right you guys and then they show was on december 2nd 2020 the news has broke you might be like jb what news broke the news about erica and tom and the lawsuits in this lawsuit i think it was a lawsuit of the plane crash victims right so now this one i can tell you who was on the skype it was erica and it was kyle and it was um renna You guys know, I've said it plenty of times that Erica is, has, when Erica first came on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I immediately fell in love with Erica. I did. And, you know, I, I kind of think I figured out why I like certain people on this, the people that I like on this show. I think I figured out why I like them. <laughs> um, Because you guys know, well, some of them, two of the people that I like. Their birthdays are in July, and you guys know that my birthday is tomorrow, which is July 16th. My birthday is tomorrow. Um, you guys know I like Erica. I like Renna. And I like Kyle. Kyle's not a cancer. So Kyle's birthday is not in July, but that's, that was the exception. And I kind of, some, sometimes I like Dorit, but I have my moments with Dorit. And Dorit's birthday is in July as well. So, like I said, the news has come out about the victims of Tom's. And, you know, Erica is talking about all the headlines at this point. And Erica is talking about some of the headlines saying that her divorce is a sham. Now, and they feel like she might be embezzling money. Mm, okay, let me let me think. Not think. Let me figure out what I, how I want to say this. I don't think that Erica was embezzling money. I don't believe that. But this divorce... And I'm, and I'm, it's so funny it's that they mentioned this. They mentioned a previous lawsuit they never, that they never discussed on the show. Like, I remember, what was that season? Was it season nine? When they, they went, the season that they went to Mexico, you guys remember? Dorit has had her lawsuits and they never mentioned it on the show. Actually, that whole entire season, people were upset because Dorit, Kyle, well, it wasn't really Kyle, it was um, Maurizio. It was Maurizio. It was Maurizio. It was, um, actually, it was the men. Well, not really the men. Yes, it was. Because season nine, Erica had that lawsuit. 
that was against Tom, um, you know, Maurizio has his hit had his little issues with a, a lawsuit, and then Dorit and PK had that issue where that woman was in Mexico and she walked up to Dorit and she confronted Dorit and they never showed that on camera. I was like, y'all did not show that on camera, but I but that woman definitely recorded it and posted it. So it's just interesting to me. But like I said, Erica saying that people think that her divorce is a sham and that she's embezzling money. I don't necessarily think that the divorce is a sham. What I feel with the divorce is that with the divorce, I feel that um, maybe Tom was trying to find a way to protect Erica. I feel that. I feel like Tom was just looking for a way to protect Erica. I don't think that she... Like, people have said, do you think Erica is, you know, I feel like Erica knows more than what she's saying. Yes, I do believe that. Do I believe Erica was complicit complicit in what Tom was doing? Absolutely not. Tom was doing this on his own free will. I don't think Erica, I mean, Erica, it's not like Erica was putting a gun to Tom saying, Tom, take the money from those people and give it to me for my career. But Erica can't sit here and say she didn't, she didn't have any inclinations about what was, what was going on. You know what I'm saying? It's an interesting story. It really is. And like I said, we're going to talk about Erica. Actually, we're about to talk about Erica in just a minute. But let's move forward, you guys. All right, you guys. So let's talk about Erica real quick. Um, Honestly, you guys, when it comes to Erica, I don't believe her. I feel like Erica is putting on a, a, a theatrical number for us at this point. So Renna and Crystal go over to Erica's house, right? And... It's very interesting how Erica keeps describing this house as small. Oh, it's so small. Oh, it's so small. Oh, it's so small. So now you're trying to put, now you're trying to put it out there that oh, since I left Tom, I had to downsize. I have a smaller house, so that means that I don't have the funds that I once had. I see what you're doing, Erica. I really do. And you are with Erica. Erica is really putting it on super duper thick at this point, and. Like I said a few minutes ago, I don't believe that Erica's hiding any assets. I don't... She, I mean, it is a possibility, but I don't think Erica's hiding assets. And now we're going with this whole narrative of Tom is an asshole. But... You never once said that Tom was this jerk, this asshole, this anything. You've always talked about how good Tom was to you, how good Tom was to your son. And it's just interesting to me, like... It's like, because if you guys go back, go back, go back to last season when she was talking to Garcelle about how, how good Tom was to her. She started crying. And I think that's my other issue when it comes to Erica Girardi. We're going to talk about her and just, we're going to keep talking about her, but it's now this whole narrative of Tom is an asshole. And then we see her later, she met up with Kyle, right? So she and Kyle, they were supposed to go on a hike, I guess. And Erica immediately starts crying. At first she was crying, when she was crying there were no tears but then eventually she 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 squalls she she was able to squeeze the tears out and honestly it just feels forced to me and we all know now that you know the judge ordered that it, the judge said that the victims can go after her like this is going to be this is going to be an interesting this is an interesting shit this is a shit show to be quite honest with you guys so these tears that Erica was giving, the reason why I don't believe them is because of this whole Ice Queen persona, right? Now, I'll tell you guys, I'm, I'm not that emotional. I don't, I cry, but it's got to be something, it's got to be something really life-changing for me. Like, it's got to be something going on with my friends, my family, myself. And sometimes I don't even cry by myself, but it's got to be something really, really deep for me to cry. So now she's now um now we're going with this whole narrative of Tom is not doing good. Tom is declining in health. I'm like, oh, okay. So Tom is going to eventually try to kick the bucket, go to glory. Okay, I, I see you coming. So then she's talking about the fact that Tom wants her to pay his legal fees, and he doesn't want to pay her any spousal support. I just, I'm sorry, you guys. I just don't believe any of this with Erica and Tom. I, I don't. I feel like this is, well, hell, I got to say it. I feel like it's a scam. I got to be honest with you. It feels like a scam to me. 
and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that the divorce is a scam. I just feel like what they're doing is a. I feel like what they're doing is trying to avoid some stuff. I feel like they're trying to trying to avoid a lot of things, but I don't think that they did. I don't think that they were successful at it because, like I said, the people, her, the victims can now come after her. So I don't know how well it worked. Because I would, I would think that Tom would say, but see, here's the other thing, because if she was, well, she's still technically married to him, so they are not divorced yet. So Erica, I don't believe that they are, I don't believe that their divorce is finalized. So if they go to court and they want to call her on the stand, they can't do it because of the spousal privilege. You know what? What if, what? Because that could be it. We go through. We say we're filing for. I filed for divorce as a statement that I had nothing to do with this, but we're not divorced. So that way I can't go. So that way when it goes to trial, I can't testify against you, and you can't testify against me. Spousal privilege. Wow, I'm just thinking, you guys. But let me um, let me move on. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Garcelle, right? So we see Garcelle. So Garcelle is going over to Kyle's crib. So Garcelle tells us that, you know, she and Kyle, since the last meetup that they had, where they, where, you know, Garcelle explained to Kyle, you know, what it meant to her when she said that at the reunion last year that Garcelle didn't pay for at the charity, they have become a lot closer with each other. And so she's going over to Kyle's house. Kyle, like I told you guys earlier in the episode, Kyle had COVID, right? So Kyle's family is not at home, but at this point, Kyle has been cleared of, you know, she's cleared. She's, you know, quarantined for two weeks and she's not testing positive at this point. But just to be safe, you know, she and Garcelle, they're going to talk like, you know, Romeo and Juliet. And so they have a discussion, right? And, you know, Kyle tells her that, you know, she's ready for them to have their, you know, their annual girls trip. Did she say they're going to La Quinta? I think that's what she said. I was like, okay, whatever. So then, you know, they bring up Erica. And, you know, Kyle tells her that, you know, Erica told them that, you know, she didn't know anything. And, you know, um, Garcelle was like, do you believe that? And she was like, yeah, you know, I don't believe, I don't, I really don't believe that she knew anything about this. This is a hard, like I said, this is a hard one for me. I don't, like I said before, I, I don't think that, I don't necessarily think she knew that Tom was taking money from plane crash victims, from people whose kids died in a, you know, because of a motorcycle accident, you know, the the fires. I watched the the hustle, the housewife and the hustler. So I don't think that she knew. I think actually I was reading, I was looking at a tweet last night about Erica, and she didn't. She wasn't tweeting up. I don't know if she was tweeting about Beverly Hills because she didn't use the hashtag R H R H. OBH. She didn't use the Beverly Hills hashtag. I was wondering because she was talking about you got people talking about me that don't actually know me. And on Beverly Hills last night, none of the women were talking about her that don't know her. Only people that were talking about Erica that I don't think know her per se is the woman from the you know um what's her name? I'm about to say Strump is Strump. What Alice calls him, Danielle. And that other woman that, you know, the, the, the glasses lady. I think those are the only two people that don't know her. So I'm wondering if she watched The Housewife and the Hustler finally. Oh, God. I wonder if she I wonder if she watched it. What does she really think? Because Danielle was really, I mean, Danielle was really talking about her as if she knew Erica. And, you know, I worked with Erica on Watch What Happens Live once. Girl, what? Watch What Happens Live? A 30-minute show? Okay, okay. Let's move on. Renna. Renna, 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 Renna. Renna will do any... I mean, Renna will pimp them girls out for a storyline, won't she? If it ain't Amelia, it's Delilah. So I did get her name right in last week's review, Delilah. So Renna is FaceTiming with Delilah, who's dating this guy. I can't remember what she said his name was, but he's from the television show Love Island. I've never watched Love Island a day in my life. So I can't tell you who he is. Don't know anything. I don't even know anything about Love Island. I know it has a cult following. 
I know Love Island is a big show at this point. I know what there's a Love Island UK and a Love Island. I know there's US version. Because the US version of Love Island comes on. Does it come on before or after Big Brother? I don't know because I haven't watched Big I haven't even watched Big Brother and it's been on for a full week. And tonight is eviction night. I just don't resonate with this cast. And I know it's more I know it's a lot I know it's more black people on this season. But I feel like the cast and the people did that to appease black people. And I'm not I'm not I don't I'm not feeling it. Like I don't want you to do something to appease us. You know what I'm saying? Do something because you it's the right thing to do. Don't cast one or two black people a season. But I'm not talking about that. So yeah. Then Renna shows us all these dresses that she's has that she's has she's kept over the years that she saved for her daughters. It's cute. Renna doesn't have a storyline. The most that Renna can talk about in her storyline this season is Amelia and Scott. That's it. Like I said, Renna pimps them girls out. I think the thing is with Renna, her I know she wanted Amelia and Delilah to be like the Hadid sisters, Bella and um, Gigi, but they're not. They're, they're, they're beautiful girls. I'm, don't, don't get me wrong. They're beautiful girls, but they're not the Hadid sisters. And I think they could have been like the Hadid sisters if their mama didn't fuck up their relationship with Yolanda. If Renna had not fucked up that relationship with Yolanda, those girls... Because actually, Amelia, I know she's a model. Or is she a model? Actually, I think both of them have been... Both of them are models. But they don't have the... the they don't have the notoriety that the Hadid sisters have. I'm not comparing them. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I think that their mother wanted. Let's move on. Tired of talking about Renna. Let's talk about Kyle. And um, So Kyle, we see her... And she is over to Kathy's house. Kathy Hilton is a freaking mess. But I love Kathy. Kathy is my girl, man. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. So Kathy is outside. <laughs> yeah, she's she's howling at her dog, Sue. I was like, oh my God, Kathy. You're great for this show. Why have we never had Kathy on? You know what? I know why we never had Kathy on this show. Like Kyle said in last week's episode that, you know, when it comes to she and her sisters, when her and Kim are good, they could be falling. They could fall out with Kathy when she and Kathy, if she and Kathy are good, they could be out with Kim. So that's an interesting dynamic with that sisters, with those sisters, because I remember that American Woman show. That is that is when Kyle and Kathy definitely fell out because Kathy was not here for that show, which I never watched that show, to be, be honest with you guys. Never watched it, but I know I know it got canceled. I actually might go watch it one day, see what it's like, see what it's about. But they're looking at Kathy's Christmas decorations, and then Kyle breaks down. I actually felt bad for Kyle. You know, she's breaking down because she just, you know, talking about her parenting and how she feels like she's not being a good parent to to Sophia. And it just really felt, I really, felt, I really, really, really felt bad for Kyle. You know, I'm not a parent, so I don't know what that feels like to not feel, to feel like you're not being the best parent that you can be for your child. But as long as your child is healthy, happy, and all, you know, just as long as they're healthy and happy and, you know, you know that they're good, you're doing, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I really, truly don't because I'm not a parent, so I can't really speak to that. But, you know, from what we see of Sophia, Sophia is, you know, a, a, a good little, a good young lady. And I think Kyle's on a good job with Sophia. That's a, that's the baby's name, right, Sophia? Yeah. So then they talk about, um, they talk about Erica. I, I will say I love the fact that, you know, um, Kathy was there for her sister, right? So they talk about Erica and the fact that she is not good. What do you think she's going to, I mean, with this, with those losses, do you think she's going to be hunky and dory <laughs> um no so yeah um that's actually it with kyle you guys let's m wrap up the episode and talk about sudden god i can't stand sudden all right you guys let's talk about sudden real quick i'm actually going to talk real quick about sudden because i don't it ain't much with her renna met her over to her crib right sudden's oldest daughter is there her name is porter she's 18 years old and i'm like oh wow Okay, so we see a little bit more about Sutton. We see her daughter, who looks exactly like Sutton. She's a freshman in college, right? 
And then they talk about the fact that Dorit has cleared for COVID. This was just a filler scene, to be quite honest with you, because nothing happened in this scene. So they talk about the fact that Dorit cleared and, you know, how it was hard for her not being able to see her kids, which I can imagine that. Then they talk about Sutton's daughter and the fact that she pledged, right, and that Sutton is strict on her. Sudden, that girl is 18 years old. She can do whatever the hell she wants to do. She doesn't need your approval. She doesn't need your opinion. She doesn't need your authority. She doesn't need anything from you. The girl is 18 years old. Now, if you have younger kids, yes, they need your approval. But as far as this one, if she want to get her lips filled, if she want to get some breast implants, if she want to get her ass done, if she want to get her body tweaked, whatever she wants to do, if she want to get a piercing, a tattoo, whatever Porter wants to do, Porter can do because Porter is what? A legal adult. Then they talk about Erica. And honestly, at this point, I'm tired of talking about Erica in this episode. It's, uh, that's all this episode was, was Erica, 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 Erica. Again, I don't believe Erica knew the extent of what Tom was doing. But I think she knew something. You had to have known something. You had to. I'm not saying that Tom was broke when they got when she got with him. But was Tom worth what he was when he was giving you the money for Eric and Jane? Like, how how long until his marriage were you when he started with the Eric and Jane persona? Because you were 28 when you got 28 when you got with him. Like, I'm not saying Eric knew. I'm definitely not saying that Eric knew. But even Eric, when she was talking about um, talking to um, Crystal talking about make sure, look at the bank account to see where the money is going and where it's coming from i'm like erica you can say that now right you you never like I, like i just said like i just said i don't think she knew but you never once questioned where the hell is all this money coming from where's it coming from you never question that you can't tell me you didn't question that because i if i see some extra money in my checking account i'm like wait a minute that i know it's not supposed to be there I'm going to be like, wait a minute, where did this come from? This ain't mine? And I don't want nobody coming after me. Like a few weeks, a few months ago, I had a large lump sum hit my checking account. And I was like, oh no, this is not for me. This is not for me. But then I looked at it, I'm like, okay, yes it is. I checked it and I'm like, okay, yes it is for me. But I was skeptical about it. But I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. That's it, you guys. That's all I got for you. Um, let me know what you guys thought about the episode overall. Like the video, leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are notified of when I drop anything else. Share this video and until the next one, stay safe. You guys take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear a mask or not. Whichever one you guys do, decide to do. Just be blessed, be safe, and socially distance you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.